listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. Hello, hello everyone. It's, thank you for joining us today. We're going to have a great show. Uh, lots of interesting information as usual. And I'm happy to be here and happy Easter to all of those that are out there and, you know, having your a nice little break this weekend for some of you gathering with family and friends. Hopefully it was a pleasant experience. And I'm happy to be here and just saying hello. Hello, JP. How are you? I'm all right. How are you doing? As I said, a little bit tired and sleepy. Um, but I did a lot of yard work, as you call it, in the, uh, in the States yesterday, uh, schlepping around enormous flagstones, big, great big pieces of slate. And, uh, yeah, well, you know, I mean, anytime you do that, something about stone, stonework, I mean, it's, it lasts. Mm. Oh, yeah. But when you do, you do it, I mean, so look at Stonehenge. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's something <laughs> that just sticks around. It really does. It does, yes, it means. So you're, you're, leave, you're leaving your mark. Yeah, uh, there was, um, there was a mark on one of the, I think it must have been a piece of, uh, cement, but, uh, there was a mark from 1992, so maybe we'll make up some cement and put some in for us. There you go. Yeah. You could do some kind of like weird coated something, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and leave it for someone later and like a hundred years later and say, oh, right. this is interesting. Yeah. I wonder, wonder what they were up to and, you know, some kind of secret, you know, I wonder if there's a treasure here and then they dig up everything underneath your garden. <laughs> well, who knows, who knows what we might find under the garden. <laughs> but uh, above the garden, we uh, made a raised bed, so we're going to start a new a whole bunch of uh, uh, raised beds. You, you have you heard of those? Yes. Yeah. yeah well, you're you're you said you went to Findhorn. Yes. Right. Yes, they got lots of those there. Okay. But, uh, well. And, and, you know, that, that whole, like, style. So what, what did you pick up from there that was, um, I mean, you, you live around Findhorn. What would be the, what did you go there for in particular? Like, oh, was it? Well, just, uh, just to have a coffee with, uh, with our friends and, uh, to go to the, the Phoenix is a, uh, is a shop there. And, you know, it's like a sort of village shop, but it's got all sorts of hippie, hippie stuff. It's a bookshop as well. And you can get organic food and, uh, uh, nice chocolate. <laughs> they got a big selection of really nice chocolates and things. Um, yeah. Yeah, indeed. That sounds good. Yeah, indeed. Is this a Cadbury chocolate or is it? I'm sorry? Is it Cadbury chocolate? Oh no, it's better than that. Um, Cadbury chocolate is really common. That's like your, you know, it's like equivalent to your Hershey. Um, okay. but, uh, it's like green and blacks is the, uh, is the yeah. fresh stuff and lint and, you know, the Swiss stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, we have that here too. Yeah. No? Very nice. Very nice indeed. So, how have our transmissions been? Um, well, I have, what I'm doing is, is I'm sending over, I had some edited ones because you know how I am. I get a little sloppy when I'm, when I'm channeling. Mm-hmm. And so, I do all sorts of things that I probably shouldn't do and sometimes I, I don't review, and then when you go to read them through, they're a mess. All right. So, so uh, what I, what I was doing is I was planning on um, sending you over a more updated version um, of uh, let's see, I think this is Rodan right now. I'm sending that over, or is it? Uh, anyhow, a new Rodan. Yeah. So there's I got a Rodan 104 here. 104. Yeah. And then, uh, there's a 104. There should be a 104A. Hold on. Let's see if I can get that done. And, but anyhow, um, I just want to say happy Easter to everybody. I don't know if I already said that. I probably did. But I hope everyone enjoyed that weekend. I mean, did you do anything special, JP? Um, no, apart from, well, you know, gardening is, uh, it's special. Gardening, gardening is special because we don't often get good weather, uh, here. So it was a nice day. And, uh, so by the time I got around to the, the evening, I thought, oh, yeah, 
and so I took the day off. I didn't do any broadcast yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I heard that, and and uh, you played music or um, something, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. So just put uh, my entire classical music in, uh, collection on. Nice. That was nice. Yeah, I hope well, everybody enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, um, sometimes we need a little break and just, just to relax and, and clear our minds because it's almost like a reset. We need, we need to just kind of get all this stuff out of our heads and, and, and just feel like, you know, we're kind of doing something like maybe mundane or simple, but mm. I think, I think it helps to regenerate our thought process and then we can go back in and start, you know, looking at conspiracy theories and all that other stuff. Yeah. They call no, it recreation or recreation. Yeah. That's what I mean. Well, um, <clears throat> over the past couple of weeks, I have been opening up to um, different species that that they've been pointing out to me, and they're giving them di- like you know I'm finding out these different names. And so just like, you know, everyone thinks, oh, it's just the reptilians, it's just the, you know, the uh, greys, you know, and you go down that list, the Dracos, and it's always the same, and it's not. Mm. So um, I came to a realization that there is some other species that they, they had pointed out to me, and I actually had visions about it, and they were trying to teach me a little bit about what uh what they look like who they were and uh someone came someone came to me and said they were hearing something about uh the joser and i, I don't know if i mentioned this last week or not but the joser it was uh joser was someone in egypt but um i came to realize that they were some kind of species and they were from another universe and it looked like a spiral universe, like a corkscrew. And the, they called it another, they called it two other names. So the Joser was also called the, the Lichen Wasp or the Tildenshun or something like that. I mean, this is my interpretation of what it sounded like. And they described them as these uh, short, uh, thick species with very hairy bodies and bulging eyes. And, and that seems to go along with those kind of nightmare type of things that kids get when they're young. And with children, you know, the what's in the closet type of species, mm. you know, kind of like this hairy body species with bulging eyes. And I've seen them before. So I finally know who they are, and they're not from our universe originally. And, and they're in some kind of spiral or corkscrew type of universe um, and so, uh, you know, I'm just, I, and I don't know. I mean, I feel like I like to share the, the, uh, insights that I get and, um, maybe help people to further, uh, categorize or understand these, my guides are telling me what they're referred to, I guess. And, um, their purpose, their purpose is menacing. Um, all the species that, that I'm going to talk about are somewhat menacing in different ways. So, uh, there is a group called um, the Mephisto, which is the Mephistopheles, the one that was talked about in Faust. Yeah. They also said that, and we we might refer to them as a type of demon. Um, uh, Mephisto is uh, was one of the Slendermen, the Slendermen, in, or Jumping Jack Flash, that was written about in history. As uh, people had seen them, they're tall and slim, and have, they're very agile. And I'll say, for lack of better words, they're Gumby-like. You know, they they can move in all different ways, and um, they have some very hard to find uh, portals. Uh, they're very hedonistic, um, deceptive, and they love fame. Um, let's see. They, um, tr- they kind of stepped through, they followed the, um, eons. They try to follow the eons and cause problems and drop, you know, cause 
the eons to look like they're blamed for things. And they use these two colors. I saw these two colors with them was blue and red. And so as I started thinking about it, the blue and the red were like, you know, the base color of the root chakra is red. And then the blue color, you know, in like the third eye, that color, not not the turquoise color of the throat chakra. And so the, these are the, the primary areas where I think that they affect us. Don't police cars have blue and red lights as well? Yeah. Yeah. Just thinking. Absolutely. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's, there's something else. Uh, and so they're very disconnected from source. And so, you know, they're, they're into all sorts of, you know, uh, guilty of hijacking people and doing different things. But the two ones that people would recognize them is, is, uh, the Slender Man and Jumping Jack Flash. Um, then there's these, uh, this other group that I'm, I'm just learning about. And they call them the Koningstadt, which um, I talked to someone from Europe, and they said that sounds like it means the king state. And I saw the red color. Um, I believe that they're connected to Saturn. They're a type of Saturn being, and they're here uh, to be in control. Kind of um, maybe they like to play the role of being royals or royal-like but not necessarily the royal family. If you know what I mean, of people that like to be in that upper echelon, but they're, they're, um, maybe have a walk in of this, this, uh, species. And I'm still learning more about that one. But there is this other one now. Um, it's a worm species. And I guess that they're, they're, they're pretty big. And I was, I had a full vision of them. Um, they have what's called base consciousness. That means that maybe they're originally two-dimensional. And uh, they seem to consume, um, you know, energy from us. And they're, I think they're originally from off-world. They might have, I got the impression that they were, they were um, very uh, much in a moon off of Cassiopeia. Um, they have, um, they like the, the whole, uh, breeding, create, and, and creating more, um, something to do with Zetas, and they, they use human DNA for energy. They're very hive minded, and they even have avatars, which I was told. And so I'm looking at the, uh, you know, all of this information that came in, and so I talked to Peter, the insider. And we were just having a discussion. He goes, oh, yeah, and there's a worm species. I said, you're kidding me. I said, I just saw that today. And he said that, well, they they pull from the, the, the louche, louche from people um, for a sexual energy, he said. Jabba the Hutt. Jabba the Hutt? Yeah. Sort of thing. Well, what was really weird is I was telling my friend um, who's going to be on the show, uh, we either, you know, I, I believe she goes by Sweelu, you know, or another name. I'll let her say the other name if she wants to. Um, I was talking to her and I said, well, I believe this species is called, the, I'm hearing the name Chungao. And she started laughing. And she goes, you're kidding me. And I said, no. And she said, well, that's kind of a statement that, you know, because she lives out in California, she goes, "That's that's kind of a slang statement that that she hears Hispanic people say." And um, well, she, she can share a little bit more about that later. But I, I mean, that was the name that they gave me, and I thought it was kind of interesting that it's it's a uh, a word that's being used already, and I never heard that that term before. It's funny so. what pops up. <laughs> so yeah, it's. Really weird. So it's the name of a species, did you say? Yeah. You know, it, like, here's the thing. When we're looking up at the sky, we see these constellations. You know, we see Cassiopeia. 
and they're named after a myth that we have here. And, you know, and then we might imagine that somebody from Cassiopeia is called a Cassiopian. But if they were looking at us, they, you know, what do they call our sun? You know, is it part of a constellation? And there are dozens of different races here, aren't there? You know, there's Chinese, Japanese, uh, Canadians, Americans, you know. It's a, it's a strange thing, isn't it? It is, and, and yeah, they are. I mean, not only are they looking at us, but they're here. This, this, this is the reason why I'm getting information. I mean, I'm not really necessarily going out there and seeing what's going on in their worlds. It's because they're present that I'm able to pick up what's, what they're doing in our world. And, and so they're, they're very present, very, very, uh, aware of what we're doing and have, have so integrated their information into our space that we, we think it's, it's normal. But as you see some of that stuff pulls away, then you can clearly look around and say, oh, there's an absence of something. I feel lighter. And you, know, you notice immediately that something has lifted. And, and, you know, so this is some of the stuff that, that Rodan's working on and, and, and it's all, you know, part of it has been, you know, kind of putting things in proper perspective. So certain species have, have taken, had this dominant role and so many of them have a dominant role. Uh, their intentions are to, you know, pretty much take over. And, you know, when, when that kind of normalizes and brings them back into, you know, their proper place and perspective, then, then there's less of this magnification and influence of these species. And so more people can awaken. More people have a sense of, you know, making better choices. Their, their thinking is less clouded. And, you know, there's other influences that are around us still, even though those lift. Now, now those other influences stand out more. So you're like, wow, something really strange or something really bad happened. Well, maybe nothing really bad happened. It's just you became more aware that it exists now because that other energy is, has disappeared. And so the veil of that is gone, but then you see something else and you think it's bad. But not really because as we're kind of um, opening up and revealing what's underneath in these, all these layers, Sometimes it's going to be some discomfort and it's time to just, you know, sort of just remove it, release it and acknowledge it and say, you know, it I, doesn't serve me. I don't need to be a part of it and allow that to go as well. So um, I, people get anxious. They get nervous when they see something that's different or changed. But this is part of the process of when they're lifting things that you will see that the, some of the stuff's gone. And also, people have grown um, accustomed to or adapt to certain um, energies coming from species that are part of a control system or um, part of a, um, uh, you know, behavior or activity. And you, you start to believe that it's normal. And then you can almost even miss it when it's gone. But once you really, if you looked at the bigger picture, you realize that, it, it had a negative influence on you or is affecting your um, consciousness or affecting even your, your um, abundance level or your communication with others around you. So um, it's, there's a lot of mixed feelings that happen in this process, but uh, I felt it was important to, to share this information as people are, are coming in and, and they're growing, you know, because part of growing is not just, it's not just the same information. It's not just like a one, two, three step process. Um, you know, there's, there's no exact method because what's happening on earth now has never happened before. And I know that people are going to say, Oh, you know, how do you know or whatever? But I, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident in saying that because there are species that have been here for so long that we wouldn't even know. We're so accustomed to it, we think it's a part of it. 
And to my knowledge, they've never been removed before, and now they are being removed. And it doesn't mean they're getting destroyed. They're just being brought to the place where they should be because things have been heavily out of balance for a very long time. It's just we adapt. Humans adapt. Animals adapt. Everyone adapts. But it's it's uncomfortable, and it has been uncomfortable for a long time. So now things might start to feel feel uh, more comfortable and not only that we don't know what, what how beautiful the earth is because it's been clouded by so many different things and and this experiences of being here was not intended to be so difficult all this other stuff was added on because of these other species bringing in things that are not ours and here again we're carrying things that are not ours so we can let it go we can just release it and and move on from there. So I'm just trying to help people to go, you know, if, if it helps in any way to lift and move through this process, then um, and that's what we do because we're all here to work together and we're all here to share our insights. And the more we do that, um, the easier it will be. And, and for people to not feel like this is only happening to them, but, you know, to give a better explanation of the experience. So with that said, I have sent you over the edited versions. It has a little A next to it, JP. Yeah, I've got those. And and we can read um, Andronicus. So we can, right? So there we go. <laughs> I'm terraforming the planet we believe to be the long-lost planet Zephron. Borkum left me a while ago with the Biralic, and I began to collect my thoughts a bit without him around. He perceives me as a dreamer, but in fact, I'm a creator, builder, artisan, horticulturalist, musical toner, an innovator of all elements, time and sound, and more. But I need time to sort it through build and rebuild in my mind to allow the manifestation of these things to awaken after spending long hours listening and interacting amongst civilizations. At times I need my alone time, a point to breathe and speak, a point to lift and float. I taste the waters before I build it. I sink in the sands and drift on the waters. I smell the mix of plants along a path to see if it is both lovely and aromatic. I know the wave of the planet that I sit upon and speak to navigate its movements like a captain of a ship. You realize that all planets are as vehicles. Only humans have yet to learn to move them properly without disruption. Only those who are trusted to use this ability will step out into space to wield it. It is not what you call magic. It is something else more lovely. It is the next gate beyond consciousness. It is about being. You might ask, what is being? Is it fitting into the existence as if remembering the origin of it, much like they remembered the birthing of it? I remember all of these things, and I can feel the sound and time and essence of all. Tell me, do you remember Zephron, the bright colors and the allure it had with many? Yes, I do, in part. There was something significant about Zephron that I can't seem to recapture. It was an essence. Do you know what it is? Is it the being, the living form or expression of Zephron? Yes. All planets have a life form all its own. When it dies or surrenders its essence to another, the planet dies in a way along with them. So you're saying that planets are living life form with personality, ideas, expressions, etc. That manifests in a way it is shaped and where it travels and regularly, where it travels regularly and aligns with in, within the galaxy. It's a bit more complex than that, but yes, that's essentially how it works. What about the regions or constellations named after others, like Cassiopeia or Orion? They become the gate holders. The keys to those constellations are in their hands to guard over. Nothing is accidental or created for myth only. Just because you don't see these beings, it doesn't mean they don't exist. 
when you become more awakened to the truth that you realize that there are many who are in charge of various regions, not just to control them, but to communicate and keep order of things. You have been conditioned to believe that many of us are part of a fantasy, a myth or silly story of the past. You're wrong in this thinking. Well, the planets were carefully terraformed and aligned to make it habitable. We deliberately have not terraformed other planets around you because this is not time for you to leave this planet. In order to go to that next level of existence, you must lift yourselves to a place of natural integration of the earth and a lighter soul essence aligned with your highest truth. Hmm. Come and see what I've done. I've planted a sea of violets for you. Many varieties of blue to purple to white. I hope you like it. These slightly glow and sparkle in the dark, almost like a solar light is in them. No, it's a natural light that is carried in the plant like some of your deep-sea creatures that came from Neptune. It is really beautiful there. I could just lay there and look up at the stars. I hope you do someday. Well, I do have more creating and terraforming. I will show you more next time. Tell me, have you heard about the wars they're trying to start on Andromeda? This time it is not the reptilians. It is something not so good. Tell me, who are they? They are your machines from the future searching for information and knowledge. That future must be changed, or the Andromedans cease to exist. How can I help you? I will guide your way through it all. Keep your eyes and ears opened. Girl, never bloody stops, does it? No. But do, do you notice that you you mentioned something about the constellations yeah. in the beginning of this conversation? <laughs> yeah. And you, you noticed that you uh, you said something about them being myths? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's almost like, wait, as soon as you said that, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, some, yeah. Well, it happens, doesn't it? It Yeah, uh-huh. I mean, this, this used to happen in the beginning when we were doing the transmissions and you would say something and, and I'd laugh because it was like you had a premonition of, of what we were going to be talking about. You, and I do all of the transmissions, you know, 95% of the time, all the tr- uh, transmissions are done the day of the show. So you don't have time to read them. And I just sent them over to you mm. like minutes before the show. Yeah. But yet you say these things. As if you know what's going to be discussed. I just come out with stuff, then I. <laughs> it comes. It just comes up, and you know, um, I was talking with a couple of friends earlier about the um, the living beingness of uh, planets and uh, and stars as well. So, yeah, it's all part of the gestalt of the day. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. I love when that happens. I do too. I do too. So. Yeah, yeah, and, and I agree with you. I, the whole thing with the machines, I was surprised to hear him say that. Because I thought, oh, it has to be some species, you know, doing, because, you know, they're menacing. A lot of them are, you know, they, they, they kind of feel like it's the end of the road for them and they're going, you know, full tilt mm. and trying to shut things down and cause problems. And instead, um, you know, um, Oh, it looks like I have a question. Yes. Um, I don't know if you want to handle it after the transmissions or just now. Okay. They just came in. No, that's great. Yeah, I'll, well, I'll do it after the transmissions because I think there's, there's more information that's coming through. But thank you. Um, the fact that he said that, that it's machines. It's not, not robots. He said machines. So I, I don't really know exactly what he's talking about. I do know that Elon Musk is creating stuff and maybe even um, some of Monarch Solutions and some of these other corporations may be meddling with things. And there was, you know, that that big rise of AI, which, you know, we're trying to all ignore and avoid, but it's it's kind of all around us and, you know, getting into our smartphones and, and you know, we're staying away from our TVs, but, you know, they have access into our computers. And, we, you know, we're just trying to, to um, you know, be free of a lot of it. So I guess we'll, we'll keep an eye on that and I'll let everyone know. And I think that everyone holding their intention 
and wanting to uh, shift and move things. Um, we are moving in the right direction, by the way. So I got a confirmation of that today. And uh, we're going to hear from that in the next transmission. And that is with Rodan. The earth is moving again to and fro, etherically. Someone has set a change in timelines. I see. It was time to release the energies which do not belong to this planet. Not all of them are gone yet, yet, but some of them. There is a star up ahead. It is moving and lifting everything back to their proper place. But you, my friends, are not completely set on a straight path yet. There is more to shake and move, to sift like sand upon the shores of time. There are more who have a chance to choose what timeline they would take. Some are right on the edge, choosing to remain in darkness. These are not the ones who are asleep, but I'm talking the ones who are awake and who are taking the wrong path by choice. You all have a choice. We don't deal with damnation here. It doesn't help a species to grow, but rather eliminates the many possible paths they could take. It is true that some may take a step back in time, and some may delay but catch up with the rest. Choose wisely, my friends, and make sure these are your decisions and not someone else's. There are many voices out there to persuade you of things that are not true, partially true, or even true but not necessarily your path. Remember, no one can make you do what you don't want to do. However, they can manipulate with cunning words and subtle lies. Watch them closely. See if the words they're saying align with your inner truth, your gut truths, and your senses of knowing. The rest, the rest, my friends, is history. You shall not be defeated. The only way you are deceived is if you surrender your soul to systems of lies. The same ones have many faces, many perspectives, but the same energy. Test it out for yourselves. Trust your inner knowing. You're all growing and learning. Set yourself free from it all and allow yourself to be liberated. It is hard to let go of what you're familiar with, but if they, whom you pay attention to, have abandoned, have abandoned sound consult, then why do you still listen? Be free. Be liberated and lift out of your comfort of oppression and step into the new realities that are now available with a new timeline shift. It is done. Hmm. It is done. Mm-hmm. Isn't that what Jesus said at the end? Oh. Very Easter, yeah. Easter message. That is interesting, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I felt some, you know, very wibbly, uh, like woozy, or um, yeah, it's like uh, like there's some, you know, it's like uh, I, I keep, uh, I can, I can only say it's like, you know, when you're in the sea, you know, you're you're paddling in the in the uh, on the shoreline, and the water is moving underneath you. So you can feel your legs are being pulled one way or another. Um, but you're still standing on the, on the ground, if, as it were, underneath the water, on the seabed. It sort of sometimes feels a bit like that. So do you think that you were feeling what he was talking about? The way that the earth is moving to and fro etherically? Yeah, I think so. It's like, yeah. I feel like, uh, I, I, I call that, that, that feeling is like when there's a timeline shift, but it's happening very frequently now. Um, so yeah, it's, it's the idea also that they're talking about, both of them, that there's, uh, you know, things aren't bad or good necessarily. They're just in the wrong place and putting them into the right place, getting them, getting things in the right order, get thing, you know, puts things right. Yeah, it, it, it's a gradual process. So when we're, we're moving and we're, we're changing, and it's it it has to be subtle. If it's too abrupt, it, it creates a problem, right? 
So it's it's subtle enough, but yet it has enough potency in it that, you know, those that are sensitive enough are, are picking it up and they're feeling uneasy. But, you know, they're they're comforting us and saying, you know, don't don't be worried. You know, it's almost like you're you're on a on a train track and you have to just move over to that next track and you can feel it. And, and you can almost feel like you're a little bit off balance in the process of it, but you have an awareness of what's going on, so it's okay. In this situation, well, you're not fully aware of what's going on, it's, so it feels unsettling. Mm. And, and that's probably why you brought it up. Yeah, just just slightly, you know. You know, um, in the old days, uh, before we had push-button TVs, the, the it was a like a um, it was a like a radio dial, and if you got your TV just kind of slightly off, and somebody walked past the antenna, the whole you know you'd see the whole kind of zzz, it would go like that. I don't know if anybody's old enough for that. So I'm remembering. Um, I remember it. I remember it. Yeah. yeah. It's just a slight re re you know just movement of energy, movement of frequency. Yeah. Anyway, a bit like that. And, and this morning, I, I had I communicated with Shiva, and it was funny. He just sort of looked at me, and he said hello, and then he he just turned around like slowly, like one one rotation. Mm. And then in that point, it was like all he had to do was just turn around, and we did a timeline shift. It's like he has that much power. Mm. And I thought that was really cool. You know, I mean, everyone else would be this whole big thing, you know, but, <laughs> but you know, he does that, that dance, right? Oh yeah. You don't want Shiva to dance. <laughs> That's the end of things, isn't it? Right. Not really. Not, not really. He, I mean, he, he dances when he's happy and he, he, um, but he also his his movements are have a purpose. You know, it's it's like we move around and you know where it's it's all over the place. When he moves, things move with him. Hmm. So he has a purpose, or at least that that's the impression that I get when I when I see him. Hmm. So. So yeah, that that was. And, you know, Andronicus, you know, had reminded us a while back, you know, and he gave us those symbols to hold on to. I mean, a lot of people, I'm, I'm hope you still have the symbols. You can see them on the website and in, uh, the Clandronicus and Facebook, um, or the Andronicus transmissions is these, even, even on, uh, the YouTube images. You see, see these symbols, and that uh, that symbol represents the highest intention for humanity. So that means that we don't have to settle for these other timelines where there's, you know, calamities and other problems, and you know, being overtaken by a species, or you know, having to be um, hybridized by another species, or sharing the space, or what. We don't have to really hold on to that. We can just you know, continually move in this flow where we're, it's, it's like, you know, going over one notch each, each time, go moving over one notch to that next timeline until we finally get to the place which is the highest potential for us. I mean, after all, this earth was created for us and, and for plant life and the terraforming which is here to support and we're here to support the plant life as well. In, in the animals and, and the other species, insects and the fish and so forth, everything that was, we were all created together to enjoy this space. And so, you know, we might as well bring it back to where it belongs, shifting, you know, in the right and proper time to that next level. And, and, and we're doing that in a, a wonderful way. So, um, to me, that's, we're not, not quite arrived, but you know, I think we're in the the right motion. We're in the ballpark. Right. So next we have Metis. Oh, good old Metis. One moment. Do, 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 do. Where is he? Time to get the uh, 
the instrument out. No. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Try again. Hang on. Hello, lovely. How I wonder about things as time goes by. I sing, I laugh, I cry. Sounds melodic, doesn't it? I'm writing a song for my new performance. The old one is a, is a stale as weak old crusty bread. I want something fresh. Something that makes people think a little, smile a little, laugh a little. I need something else that isn't too pretentious. I don't have to perform for the upper crust anymore. I can sing for the lowly, sad and hard-working blokes out there. It's not that I don't think the upper crust has their sorrows, because they do. They have disappointments and many try to take or use them in so many ways. But I have tried, really, I've tried to help them to see that oppressing the poor is not the only way for them to gain. They hardly ever listen to me. I say it hard, soft, sincere, with a bit of jest or wit. Time lapses. Still, I don't think it quite sinks in. It's almost like a type of breeding, like a pedigree that refuses to eat the scraps and would rather die than lower their standards. Somehow, in their blood, there is a code that says, Elite. They cannot get past it. Anything else is beneath them. Well, I told them over and over again, the soul doesn't take a number to them. No one is waiting behind them in the laughter life. They will be sorry, I promise you. Very well, then. Let's skip over the long-winded conversation and get back to the simple folk. They know how to appreciate everything because that when they have a celebration, they're not bored at all. They put everything into it. That's when I realised my mediocre attempt to entertain had gone stale. It was me, and yet they were so kind it's about it all. They even sang along, singing every line, every tone, every nuance, every expression, every gesture, right down to the bow. Perfect. At that moment, I realized any one of them could perform my act. The fool was made the fool, but no one mocked me, just laughed with me. I was embarrassed, but threw in a few not often sung melodies, just to throw them off a bit and went on my jolly way. Very well. Very well, then. I swift kicked from behind. I changed my clothing. I changed my act. I made myself much taller, no more slouching when I perform. I got some silly shoes, some fancy knickers and pantaloons. I had a large belt buckle and a fun hat to play the buffoon. You realise I do this on purpose. I want nothing more than lift up the souls from the day-to-day -day sorrows. Do you think it'll work? Yes, me, to see. Why would you doubt yourself? I know you're capable of so many things, and I'm actually surprised that you hear that you got a little stuck in the mud. Stuck in the mud? Midas looked down at his shoes in the back of his socks and knickers examined to see if they were covered in mud. No, Midas, I'm not saying you got mud on your garments, but rather you got stuck in a pattern of doing the same thing over and over again. Oh, yes, that's very true. Yeah, very well. Well, I'm happy to see I didn't get mud all over me again. That happened just the other day when I went across the road and a carriage hit a puddle. One, two, three, pause. No, wait, it cost me a few buttons to spare to get things back to normal after that. Hmm. Oh, I'm back again. Sorry, was drifting a bit. So I wrote this song yesterday. Have Primus give a go at it. Fields of green, toil and labour Lift up your eyes and do yourself a favour no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong, as no, the meter, the meters, the meter is wrong <laughs> Fields of green, and toil and labour labor. Lift up your eyes and do yourselves a favour That's better why do you worry? Why do you weep? Why do you wake up 
without any sleep. You have your cup of tea. You set up before sunrise and look at the sky and curse all that you should die. But this is the way we want you to stay. There are better days ahead. Don't touch my sister's appointment in your head. You have much more than you know. It's not how the wind blows. It is who you must do. What's right for you? Tell me now and again. Should you sow seeds for others to spend when you could add a few? Grow some in the back roads for you. There are always ways around the bend. Don't give up, my friend. Be creative instead. Never let them get into your head. They defeat you with discouragement. They control you with repentance. They confound with you with confusion and then take from you when you surrender. Be twice as nice and ask no advice. Keep your pay to a whisper. Let no one know who hasn't missed you. Take it far down the line. Keep your comforts quiet and sublime. Have abundance stored ahead. Let no one ever get in your head. La 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 la. Live now and don't act it. La 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 la. Be the wiser than others will see. Keep your comforts for no one to see. Fa la 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 la. Let them tell their stories to boredom. We are wiser not to show them. Keep your comforts where no one can take them. La 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 la. Freedom is there forevermore. Freedom's there forevermore. Job. Thank you. Yeah, so, sometimes the uh, the words don't kind of fit in the square bit, so I just kind of roll them over. But there you go. Hang on. Where, yeah, it's where's the probably magic? the way that I write it. Okay, we go. <laughs> so we get the, <laughs> the right thing. So yeah, I, th- I think what he was trying to say is is you know don't don't let you know, when, when you find something that you enjoy, don't let everybody know. Just just do your thing, mm. you know. Just don't, you know, fi- find little ways that you can create a little something extra for yourself and be creative in how you do it. So I, I, I think it was a great message. He's trying to just encourage everyone to not let everyone. The systems get you down because, you know, the systems have been around for a long time, haven't they? Yep. And then... What is it? Non, uh, non permitum carborundum, uh, illegitim. <laughs> Don't let the bastards grind you down. Yeah. So, we got one more. We get, we get Gary and then there's some, some questions there I want to get to you before we bring in our guests. So we'll get to you in a moment. Okay. Hello, hello. What are you eating? Peanuts? They give me a rash. Oh, you have a peanut allergy, Gary. No, I didn't say that. I just said they give me a rash. Well, that's what it sounds like. Really? I didn't know I could have an allergy. I thought an allergy was when your face looks like it is puffed up and swelling of something like that, and then your feet smell. I guess that is one of the attributes of an allergy, but also a rash could be an effect of it. But I'll be honest, I've never heard of feet smelling from an allergy. Oh, no, 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 that's not quite what I said. I want to know why humans' feet smell so bad. Well, I believe that's 
from bacteria in our bodies. Bacteria? Eee, how disgusting. I told you when, I told them we need to sanitize all of you. Just a good scrubbing is what you said you needed. I said, no, no, much more is required. I insisted on an antiseptic wash, not just for the feet. Imagine all those germs, bacteria, fungi, yes, viral stuff. You, you're always getting sick, sniffling, stuffy noses, coughing, fevers, bacteria. A good cleansing would help. Are you saying that you don't have any bacteria while you're, you know, on you or around you, Gary? You're on our planet like we are. I know, I know, but, 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 yuck, creepy, crawly things, it makes me nervous, all of it. I know, I don't like it either. Who created this system in the first place? You know, them. Who is them? Shh, why do you say it so loud? They can hear you. I don't know who you're talking about. How is it? How and, and who can hear me? Them. There you go. Now they're looking at Are you happy now? I have to go. I'll never trust an earthling for anything. We'll always get a cat out of the bag and I don't blame for it. Yes, me, every time. Bob was right. Humans aren't ready yet. Ready for what? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you'll find out soon enough. Now look, I'm in hot water, if you know what I mean. Hush, hush. They're listening. All right, beaming back up. Try not to get into any trouble when I'm gone. Farewell, Earthlings. <laughs> he doesn't like the dirt. Yeah. No, it's funny. It's just so. It's always. I, I never know what kind of conversation I'm gonna have with him. He is, he is. And I don't know who them is. He still didn't tell me who they were. Oh. It, it looked them. like he had to go up and talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he got in trouble, so hopefully it's not too bad. And I'll hear about it later. Mm. So. Okay. All right. Question. Uh, we have some questions. Yes. Um... I have someone else sent me a question as well that they saw in the chat. Um, dear Jessica, this is from BN58. Um, what do you recommend to a common Joe to connect to higher self? Any preferred method? I, I recommend, first of all, there are no shortcuts. Meditation is really required. You can't connect to yourself unless you get into that quiet space. And so you're breathing properly and you are allowing um, the mind to be quiet in order to start connecting in. And with regular practice of meditation, you also incre increase your intuition. You will gain better insight for decision making. You will slow down um, your blood pressure and your help your heart and stress relief, and so many other things that are good for you. But that's not the, you know, that's not the only reason, but it's it's like all these extra things you get just by practicing meditation. And I will tell you, it's it. I started meditating and really fully opened up more than I ever thought of. I didn't meditate to become intuitive or, you know, I was already, you know, seeing and feeling stuff, but... The meditation helped me to just relax. And we live in a very stressful world. But once I relax, then I could connect to my higher self. You're aligning your chakras. You're doing all of these different things that help you to gain um, a deeper knowledge for yourself, um, for resolving problems, for answering questions, to become more um, attuned to your own intuition, you know, I always tell people your daily life requires guidance. Look at the animal kingdom. The animal kingdom knows what the weather is going to do. And we we forgot or we were told not to pay attention to those extra senses that we have already. But the animals, you know, still listen to it. And that's why 
they know what to do and we don't. You know, so we're relying on information constantly to come in from like the news or that's why we got so dependent on, on the news and in other sources when we should be looking within and having a sense of what we should do. So, um, hopefully that, that answers your question. And also, um, BN58 asked, uh, started bringing up information about Shiva being the god of destruction. Shiva is the creator destroyer. So that means that in, in the process of creating, and I know that it's hard for people to understand, they hear that word destruction and they just see that he tears things up. But when you're going to create something, believe it or not, when you're creating, you're actually destroying the energy in the space in the process of bringing something new in. It's something more like that. He's, he's not here just, he's not like the damnation God or, or anything like that. I mean, he's, he has a purpose. And, and I don't, I don't claim to be an expert in the Hindu belief system and, or the Shaivism, which is uh, the, the teachings of Shiva. I just, I just know him from communicating with him and know that there is a beautiful, amazing benevolence about him, and he is here to uh, guide us and holds things in place in an unseen way. He's not necessarily on any timeline. I've actually seen him walk through the timelines as if, like, just walking down rows and corridors. It's very, very cool, the stuff that he can do, and that... um and I'm not telling people who to worship or what to believe, but my interaction with him has been wonderful. And um, maybe people should had a, a misunderstanding about what he was capable of doing. And it's like some of these beings are so incredibly powerful that people immediately, you know, when we see in comparison to what we know is, is a sense of fear, like, wow, they can do that. And, and instead, if you kind of just relax and are, are, are in that space and you can see that there's, there's a lot of amazing benevolence because if he has the ability to create and destroy things, we're still here. We're not destroyed. So, um, and he's around and he knows everything that's going on. So, and, and I'm not saying he's the only being out there, but he is one of the very, very powerful ones. And I think that, in my personal opinion, and not to offend anyone in their belief system, that Shiva is probably one of the mis- most misunderstood of of the um, the deities or the the higher beings that that we know about. So that's my opinion, um, and I hope that answers your question, BN58, and welcome anyone else that has questions. So, um, with that said, we're gonna. Play some music, and then we're going to bring in uh, my guest, uh, Sweelu, and if she wants to go by her other name, then she can do so. Um, but I'll I'll bring her in. We're going to talk a little bit more about what's going on out there regarding that issue we discussed on Cortexafan. Go ahead. All right, so we're back, and uh, thank you for sticking around and listening to the next. Uh, hour of our show and you know last week we had Peter the Insider talking and sharing some information from the ACIO and some things that happened at first they begin with you know Monarch Solutions and some of these corporations start experimenting with things and they usually experiment with people that they have control over you know almost like a control group and then somehow that that uh, whatever the, the um, process of what are they experimented with then goes into the mass public, you know, like LSD, you know, was, was a manufactured drug. And as you know, I mean, there's many of the drugs are now, uh, there's many manufactured drugs. So, you know, I, I thought I'd ask my friend Laura, you know, who I'd mentioned, and, you know, the same time Peter was telling me about his information I end up talking to my friend Laura, who actually works in in this industry field of um, assisting people who have uh, like a drug rehab or have 
you know, issues and challenges with substances to see what was going on. And she simultaneously was telling me that she heard of this problem. And I, I want her to share this with you. Not, not so much that we're going to be, you know, we're looking at something really negative, but rather, you know, uh, information is gold and it gives you more to work with. If you have some, some knowledge and some content, then you can take that information, have an idea and even, you know, spread the word about it. So, um, without further ado, I'm going to bring in, uh, Laura and, uh, thank you for joining us today. Good afternoon. And uh, there's a couple of things that I'd like to read. Uh, I see this this topic that I'm presenting as a third dimensional manifestation of a hidden agenda. And as it progresses, I think everyone will be able to see all that. This is a drug called fentanyl. And it's a synthetic opiate or opioid. And I was in a training two weeks ago with the uh, SWAT team from the sheriff's department in L.A. County. And they were doing a training. I was uh, partaking of this training. It was really kind of interesting. And uh, this is the initial information. The current outbreak involves not just fentanyl, but also fentanyl compounds. The outbreak encompasses virtually the entire United States, resulting in thousands of deaths and involves a wide array of individuals, including new and experienced abusers. Um, This drug is put into heroin and it's put into um, a well-known pain reliever called hydrocodone. So it's um, it's mixed with these other substances and it, which can alter the appearance, but it's lethal. When they when the police when the law has an opportunity to come in contact with this substance or suspect that it's a, that it's fentanyl, they do not open it because the powder can kill you. Uh, only a few grains, like that of four or five grains of salt, is enough to kill a human being. The thing that I found interesting in this um, is one of the people, I don't think anybody where I work is going to be listening to this show, but if they are, oh well. One of the uh, main directors was in the group, and he kept asking, um, how do you activate the staff? How do you activate the staff and get them to uh, promote this this um, uh, this other drug called Narcan? How do you activate them? And I found that I'm sitting there and I'm finding those words very interesting. Activate. The purpose of the training was not just to inform us of the um, the outbreak of this drug, which is manufactured by China in China, and in Mexico, and it's sold online and in the streets. And the pharmaceutical companies are very connected to all this because they have developed a drug called Narcan, and all of the policemen are going to be carrying Narcan kits in their uh, cars or on their persons when they are out in the field because this will save a person's life. Uh, from an overdose. It's, it's a nasal, uh, it, it injects nasally and it will bring somebody out of a, an overdose immediately, even though they still may need medical help. Um, there, there's a lot of people that are dying from this substance and it just kind of uh, adds to everything else and some of the, the stuff on the planet that doesn't belong here. And what's really behind all of this, getting rid of the people on the planet. This man, the uh, head of the SWAT team, said that he he found it in Africa. People were dying of it in Africa, which is, um, it says a lot to me. Because I look at things from, uh, I go global and universal with this. And what is it that we can do? Because the intervention, it seems like it's a good thing with the Narcan, but the... Um, it's still, this drug is still being manufactured illicitly by some pharmaceutical companies 
and by other, I guess, at home, uh, scientists who can, um, manufacture the drug. So it's, um, it's moving towards California from the east. It was in Northern California. Now it's moving into Southern California. And I don't know really what we can do on this level. I think it needs to be dealt with on other levels because we're working as hard as we can to try and save lives. I see people coming into my office day in and day out, and there's so many of them that are hijacked, and the drugs are used as an entryway into that person's essence. And so I do a lot of cleaning up, and it gets exhausting because there's so much of it. That's why I like doing uh, the work on other levels, because that's the source of it. But this is the manifestation here now. Another thing that kind of goes on with this is, uh, it's a little different, is an AI uh, aspect, is all of our computers were updated or upgraded to Windows 10 because the county has launched a system called SAGE. And SAGE is like, a, it's like, my picture of it is like this room with this giant computer in it, and everybody in L.A. Can, County will have access to this. I can't get into it uh, until I have total uh, security clearance, which I think is interesting. And uh, they gave, I had to give them some of my information that I didn't like. And I told them that this is too private, too personal, but they don't care. So I'm sitting back watching all this. And this um, all the information about all the clients is going to be in this computer. All the notes we put in about them, all their legal stuff will be in everything. There's no separate pockets of information now. It's all going, it's kind of a global thing regarding each client. So anybody can have access to these people. And I, um, this is not really a good thing. I'm really uncomfortable about it. And I'm sitting here and I'm still in the field and I still belong there for a little while at least to maybe affect a change on a different level. But it's uh, very interesting. Well, I I think it's interesting, Laura, that, I mean, you're hands-on. You're right there. You're seeing, um, you know, some of the newest things that are hitting the streets because you have to deal with the people that have survived it. And, and, you know, as much as we don't like to talk about the drug problem, I mean, it's really in your face. Uh, There there are wonderful families that, that have just about every family somehow knows someone that is affected by drug abuse or alcohol abuse or, um, you know, any of the, the, these um, substances. And the substances are, you know, another way of uh, controlling the masses, you know, because then they all have to go into these programs, right, these AA programs and or these, uh, you know, narcotics program. And, and then, you know, further get mind controlled and, and, and you know, and, and if a lot of this stuff shouldn't exist. I mean, it, what is going on and why, why are they, the drugging our youth? Why are, um, I know that they've, oh, they put stuff in marijuana now and people think they're just smoking, you know, oh, you know, it's an herb, it's natural. And then you find out that there's other stuff in there that you didn't, you know, did, weren't prepared for. And, you know, that's why I even like I tell people, you know, you, people are freely going and they're, they're going on their, their quest, their experiences, spiritual experience and doing ayahuasca and, and doing this other stuff. You don't know for sure what's in this stuff and how it's going to react to your body. I mean, we're living in, you know, sometimes in, uh, toxic experiences and, um, you know, this is one way to forfeit your sovereignty. And I know that people say, well, you know, the, this is a spiritual thing and this is how you open up. And, and they even to this day, some people claim that LSD is a, a spiritual path. It's a chemical. It's a man-made chemical and it's toxic and it's hurting your brain. It's hurting your, your awareness. And if it's hurting any part of you that helps you to become more awakened, it could limit you. It could prevent you from going to that other level of of expansion, it could prevent you from having the, the full 
um, you know, openness and, and, and the true, true uh, visions of, of different experiences. And I'm a strong, uh, you know, I, I don't agree with the whole drug thing. And I never used the drug thing to open up to my visions and my insights. Um, this, all this stuff's been happening since I was a child. So, but, and I think that that's how we open up the best. We don't need anything artificial. We were designed to, to open up this way without anything at all. And, um, only, only that are just natural essence of who we are. So that's why we want to retain that in our auric field, like you said, Laura. But, well, um, it rips, open, it rips open the auric field. And so all of these other things can come in and take control. And when, you know, the LSD thing, for a few years, I used substances. I haven't used anything for 47 years. So I have personal experience as well as clinical uh, experience and spiritual uh, knowledge. And the Sandoz company manufactured LSD. And the, it was kind of interesting because I got some. <laughs> and it didn't do anything that I had hoped it would do. And I, I can get way higher, uh, without the use of anything. And, uh, any, any, a lot of the chemicals and the water, they, I'm very sensitive to all this stuff. So I have to be mindful of what's going into my body all the time or take, su- uh, not substances, but, um, supplements and, uh, holistic, uh, remedies to keep myself balanced. And the, um, when I have somebody in my office, it's like they're off of their bodies. They're not even connected. And so I do what I can, but there's only so much I can do. The control with the brain, the subs, these substances are so, they're different now than the substances that uh, I part, partook of as a teenager, uh, over 47 years ago. And I believe that they're designed to really, um, to cause permanent change in the brain chemistry and I watch these people and a lot of the work I do is education education intervention motivation work and uh, I'm pretty good at what I do and I have a lot of people that complete the the program Uh, but it takes at least 90 days to get enough stuff out of the, the brain for the brain to start healing if people can even wait that long and then you have this other stuff on the other hand, like fentanyl. And um, there's a, a lot of opiate. It's it's a drug uh, more powerful, 100 times more powerful than morphine. And heroin is a derivative of morphine. And it's a sense of not feeling anything. So of not being in your body and not being attached. So if you're not in your body connected, something else is going to find a space in there. And... Um, it's just and the marijuana, the cannabis that they have. There's a lot of people having um, from using that drug. Uh, they're having uh, a drug-induced psychosis because it's so powerful. And somebody has an investment in this. It's legal out here, and it's really going to be a, a bigger problem because they're making money from it. They're making money from it. They're going to be taxing the. They tax it, and then the government and then they're going to be putting people in jail because they're driving while they're under the influence and so it's a huge it's a huge conglomerate of crappe that's french for the short word <laughs> right <laughs> um yeah and the corporations are a part of this my business is a corporation and it supports all this stuff with the um, medication assisted treatment it changes your brain and some people I, I don't know what they need but I don't know if they're possessed or if they have something inside of them but they do need something to contain them or they can harm themselves or other people so it's really a it's a sad it's a sad state of affairs and another area that needs to be cleaned up from its source not at the bottom, from its source. Right, and and 
it's it's really it must be you know from day to day having to observe and see this and you've been doing this work for years working in this this field of of helping um you know i can't imagine how many different people have come, walked through that facility that that you saw, you know, the damage that it caused. And, and some of them probably, you know, could have had a life, could have had a chance and, uh, you know, fell into the system, got caught and snared into it. Like you said, that the drugs of years ago are not the same thing. And so people that are casually, you know, trying something out might find themselves in the hospital. Yes. Uh, and there's, that's happening more and more with, uh, with the, because you don't know what you're getting. You don't know when the people are getting these drugs, they don't know what they're getting. They don't know what they're shooting up, sniffing, shoving, whatever they're doing, however they're, uh, putting it into their body. This thing was really important. This, uh, not a, it wasn't that important, but it, I thought it was interesting. This thing is field operations directive. This sounds very military. And this is the deployment of Narcan nasal spray, naloxone, for opioid overdoses. And it uses deployment here about four times. They're deploying this drug called Narcan, which will save somebody life when they've overdosed. I just thought it was interesting. It's military. Right. Field operations, military. They don't, they don't know what to do, you know. I mean, how this, this stuff gets on the streets and, and this, this is where, you know, we, when, when the ACIO starts talking about things, it trickles down. So you have, you have this, these engineered drugs for, um, super soldiers, right? Or for, for people that they, they want to use for some type of agenda. And, you know, they bring these children in and they, they start, you know, pumping them with drugs so that they're confused. They're, they get, you know, molested, abused and all sorts of things. And, and then, and then they, um, introduce these, you know, very advanced type of drugs that have, you know, the, the, um, the, the Fento or the nanobots and, it, it's it's like a smart drug, you know, and there's there's controls, there's all sorts of like really weird stuff. And so, according to um, Peter the Insider, that you know they they're putting this stuff in vaccines. Um, Cortexafan is is the product that he was talking about that they used on these kids that were rescued from Monarch, and uh, they were they were I talked to. You, you know, a few of them, and they had a really horrible time coming down off of that drug, and they needed to have an antidote for it. And the problem is, is they they just don't have a full awareness, but they have these. Um, it gives them this, like uh, I don't know if it's like a Superman ability uh, or like Superman kind of mentality, like they can do anything, you know. And um, Peter attributed that to like how some of these kids are getting involved in these shootings in school is because of uh, Monarch Solutions or some of these other groups um, put, you know, are having as an experiment, having some of this stuff go into the vaccines to see what will happen. And so you, and now then it trickles down into, you know, um, a street version they get a hold of it somehow. I don't know how this works, but I, I, from my perspective, um, just having the information, sharing with people so that they have, they can, you know, spread the news and let everyone know, um, whatever they need to know to prepare people that, that are thinking of just, you know, doing recreational drugs or experimenting with things and even, you know, really take another look at pharmaceutical medicines there are herbalists out there there are people that that are responsible and that are using natural remedies for things and of course you know um for some people if you don't have anything wrong with you you know just you know really taking good care of yourself as much as possible because as soon as you get caught into the system of of what the pharmaceutical companies are giving and then there's all these other side effects and 
what have you, you know. But there's, so, there's so much to discuss along this topic. But um, just to, you know, give everyone a heads up about what's going on in the streets right now. Uh, not to say that, I mean, it might feel negative or whatever, but in the end, you know, hopefully you'll want a friend or, or someone let them know that, you know, these things are out there and there's a problem. Yeah, and if you have a, a relative that's using opiates, you can get an Narcan kit so that you have it in case they overdose and they don't have to die. It's 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 kind of interesting. Is the difference between it's like you save their life so that they can do it again, but at least if their lives are saved, there's an opportunity for a change to happen if they're alive. And there's so many systems within systems that it, it's not just <laughs> The drugs. It's just systems within systems. It's hard to even describe because I can see it and I can feel it. And so I'm just one one person there. There's not anybody else like me at uh, where I work. And so I'm butting up against a lot of, of dark stuff, trying to clear clear it out and bring the light in there. And it's um, I know we're making headway, especially with those worms, Jessica. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, we had a discussion because I was looking at some things, and that's when I saw the worms I was talking to you. Yeah, that was funny. And the name of the worms, the chingao. Yeah. In Spanish, I got two different, um, from two different dialects, Mexican dialects, that um, it means ah, crape in the short form, starting with S, ending with T. And the other one, that was from a female, and from a male who was from a different uh, part of uh, Latin America, he said it means it's like get away from me, just like leave me alone, get away from me. And I tell you, that's how I would feel if I had those worms around me. But they're invaders, and uh, what we saw was that they're it was really insidious because they were hidden and they were connected to the Zetas. Right, so, right, and we know that the Zetas are you know kind of working with this. Um, the fourth right Nazi uh, alternate reality that that's kind of that's been in our in our reality causing problems. So uh, yeah, yeah, this that's what we that's what I saw, and then later on that day, or it was the next day, I talked to Peter, and he he mentioned something about we have a problem with these worms, and I was, I was just like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> what a wonderful convergence because it's like as all the beings are coming as the work is being done and the beings what a, a power net to remove this stuff because we had a huge problem with it here in California with the Zetas and then it's like we did some work with that and then here come the worms and that's right. like, great the and, worms. and according to Peter the, the worms are looshing off of um, humans you know, um, with sexual energy and, and probably the drugs as well, I imagine. Drugs. Methamphetamine have... hits people sexually. Okay. That's another drug that, um, that hits them sexually, cocaine, but it's really meth, methamphetamine. So, so that, you know, that an ecstasy, right, is another one? Ecstasy, yes, is another All one. All right. So, so this, so are these drugs being manufactured to further feed some of these species you know that's that's a question you know are, are, are they you know somehow trying to support the you know having a knowledge of these species and supporting them through these drugs or are they you know shape-shifting you know involved in in the industry and the production of some of these drugs to further their agendas we do have an ET species with a presence here on the planet. And uh, whatever it is that they need, they seem to be able to, you know, we're getting getting hit from all different angles. So we have to be all the smarter about it. We really have to take control and not allow uh, so much to be happening. And, and that's cutting off their food sources, their energy, their, their uh, areas of lushing. From us. Yeah, and then those who, uh, they're not even aware, the people under the influence aren't even aware that this is happening, that they're being so drained. And then when they get clean, 
it, they're tired for months. They're exhausted because it takes months to start healing. It takes about two years to heal the brain from uh, regular methamphetamine use. And if we keep them there because they're so, they know, the brain, their brains know that if I use this drug, I'm not going to feel this way. I'm going to have energy and I'm going to be moving. And yet they're, they're, uh, they're being used. And it's, it's like a takeover thing. And there's so many systems that have been brought down and we just need to keep working on it for the people who don't know. They don't know. They don't know how much their will is being uh, affected by the chemicals. I've had uh, two or three military uh, clients. And the sad thing about that is because they shoot them up with all of those drugs, I guess, while they're in basic training. And then they they come home after being so traumatized with PTSD, and then they continue using drugs to con- to try and, and get themselves okay when they didn't use drugs before that point. And uh, it's real difficult. I've had one person that's been trying for years to get clean. Now, finally, he's been clean for a period of time, but he's on other medication to keep him under control because he has his PTSD is so severe. So they're doing this with all the military, and then they're coming back, and they're uh, killing themselves. They're killing other people. It's a, it's a horrible cycle. It is. I mean, the, there is hope, though, because there's a lot of us doing the work to, uh, from source, through the source of this. I always like to ask, well, what is the source of this? Let's get to the source of it and cut that off and let it uh Trickle down as, uh, didn't Bush used to say that? The trickle down effect from, <laughs> from the billionaires to the slowly people. You're not really quoting Bush, are you? <laughs> I'm kidding. Somebody, I'll say it this way. Somebody said that. And I didn't it this morning. But when you get the source of it, it shifts, it shifts everything. Yeah, no, it, absolutely. Absolutely. It, Reagan. Did Reagan do that? <laughs> Reagan. Did JP said. <laughs> yeah, Reaganomics. Reaganomics, yeah, the trickle down thing. It's like, yeah, I don't like any of them. But it does, you know, there there is uh definitely some fact in that that you know, essentially the drugs they come from some other type of experimentation, maybe from the military, maybe from governments, maybe from uh some lab somewhere that was an accident. Maybe from, you know, these, um, very, uh, high corporate corporations that, that are contrary. And, uh, you know, some of it's process of, you know, eliminating the population. Some of it may have something to do with, uh, taking over the free will. I mean, we, no one can take our free will. We have to forfeit it. And one way, one insidious way to do that is is through drugs and alcohol. Right. You know, just bring people into a level of submission. Take it. So, you know, hold on to your free will. I mean, that's that's probably one of the most valuable things you have on the planet, and no one even even guards it. You know, and I mean, as people aren't as mindful of it, no one really talks much about it. But it's it's probably the most powerful thing that we have, and that that prevents a lot of things from happening here. It affects our everyday life. We're here in it. We're in it, and uh, that's why we're some of us are here on the planet to help change it. And all those personal experiences I had with substances has really served me well in the field, and I believe that I was divinely guided guided to be in this field. I have an understanding that on so many different levels of the problem. And a lot of times I just do, I do uh, brief meditations in the groups, maybe just five minutes because they can't, their attention span is really short. So I'm introducing them to higher energies through myself and through spirit to help make a change. And they like it. They like it because it changes them. They feel high. They feel good in a different way. Right. It's just that they have a hard time practicing it on their own. That goes for a lot of people, though. I mean, meditation isn't easy for, you know, a lot of people have challenges with that. But, no, I think that's wonderful. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, you and I talk 
every now and then. And, and I, I think that, you know, you have a heart for everyone, for people, and you want to see change and you want to see, you, you know, the type of person I think a lot of the people in my life really want to see the earth go in the right direction, really want to see the people healed and have what they deserve. And, and I, and I, I just love the, the conversation and, and being um, informed and sharing ideas. And, and that's what it's all about. I bring in a, a certain portion of information. You bring in information. JP brings in information. And all of you in the chat room are bringing in information. I love it that, you know, we, we mentioned the drug and, and then others, you know, we're bringing in links to further uh, educate others if they want to see more about it. Uh, this, this is what it's all about. Everyone's bringing in a piece of information. And in a collaborative way, we are all making the change. By providing information, then we have a better understanding of how to address certain issues. So if there's any gray areas, we're going to get rid of the gray areas. We're going to try to open it up so there's a lot of clarity and that, that it's easy to make a decision rather than, you know, wondering, you know, are you doing the right thing or not? Um the other piece that you mentioned, Laura, is the uh, AI, which is another thing that the ACIO has communicated to me, has has amped up. And so they're creating uh, forms of networking. Now, we know that networking is something that happens, particularly, you know, through government programs or government establishments that there is already a network that exists. Governments have them, and governments also interact with other governments. We, as we're speaking right now, are interacting in networking through the World Wide Web, through uh, Wolf Spirit Radio. What is different about this uh, AI that you're talking about compared to networking? Um, Well, it is networking. It's networking, though, with clients, with people in the system. People who uh, have uh, out here call it Medi-Cal, other places they call it Medicaid or Medicare. And there's, um, it's changed since July 1st of last year. Nothing has been the same. It's been very difficult on all the staff. It's almost like it'd be easier if I could put a chip in my head to get the information that they want us to have. And I told my supervisor that. I said, really? It's like, I feel like you're trying to make me a robot. And uh, I, I just really stand up against that energetically. It's not so much I say, it's, it's how I am. But all this information that was in pockets before with, um, say, the, the DPSS, Department of Public Social Services, that was a department. The criminal justice system is the department. Medical like for physical problems, that's a department. Everything is going to be in one place and anybody can access it. And I'm watching this and it's like, oh my God, it's like it's under the guise of something really good. And it's like, yeah, not really. And it's uh, interesting. And now because uh, all of our funding has changed, we don't have the funding that we used to have. We have this, it's all under Medi-Cal. And there's these people called stakeholders, people who make over a million dollars contribute to this pot of this money that's going for Medi-Cal that pe- that's paying for their treatment. And yet we have to put it in this structure, in this form to deliver it. Wow. <laughs> money makes the world go around, doesn't it? I guess it does, but we have to justify what we're doing with the clients, and it's all it's it's called uh, science-based evidence that this stuff is really happening, and we have proof. Well, human beings can't be put into that box, right? And it's kind of interesting to see how long this lasts. I don't think it's going to have a, a real. Um, it's not going to be forever because too many systems are falling. This, and this is a system that they've been working on for a while, and they implemented it. They launched it uh, July 1st, and 
everything, our, all our documentation changed, the way we do our work has changed. They're giving us all this information. I spent 10 hours this weekend doing these trainings online that are mandatory for my job. So I do this stuff on one level, and then on the other level, I'm looking at it. It's like, okay, well, what's the source of this, and how can we take it down? I like taking stuff down. That's the dragon in me. I want to get rid of it. I want to move it so that the light can come in. And that's what I'm looking at. Uh, I'm watching this. And there, there isn't anybody that I know of in my department that looks at stuff the way I do, which is fine. So I'm there for a reason. But I want to look at the source and get to the source and remove this stuff in a way that's not harmful to me or to others. Right. And, you know, you're probably the only beacon of light there. And helping people to awaken in the process while you're assisting those that that have um, damaged themselves through these substances. But I'm sure that um, I still think that there's hope that people can heal. I don't think that people can heal through through all of it. You know, if they have a desire and it's very likely that they were brought to you in that process. And all of us having this information, of course, like I said, you know, it can, can move it along. But, um, the fact that, uh, that the networking where they're collecting more and more private information of people. And so they, they can justify it when they, you know, they find like someone that's homeless or, um, you know, substance abuse and a lot of these government facilities are usually you know, a place where they gather more private information than they would of the general public. Right. Well, more than they should have, right? We should have privacy to some degree. Well, they say that you do. And the only way that you can have access from one part of, of your life in this big uh, computer system is that if you have a release. And it's like, uh, that's crap because... It, it's already out there. Anybody has access to it. You know, every, the government has access to me, to you, to all of us. And it's like, yeah, really, whatever. So I listen and it's like, okay, whatever you say, uh, it's crap, but whatever you say, I get it. Right. Forgive me if I, uh, hurt anybody's ears. This is the dragon speak. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, dra- dragons, dragons are an interesting species. I mean, they were misunderstood and throughout history, they were the target of getting attacked and killed and, or, you know, use their, their, uh, their They're power to, to create magic and so forth. But, um, you know, the energy that we, I think we need more energy of the dragons to assist us in, in cleaning up some of the things on the planet. Because I believe that's what they were, you know, why they were here in the first place. Right. And, you know, I really, really love your honesty and your straightforwardness. And in working in the industry that you do, uh, sometimes this is necessary as as a, a point of checks and balances and, and saying, hey, you know, wait a minute. You know, just because this is a system or a government run program or, or something like that. It doesn't mean that we have to shy away from speaking the truth. I mean, we, we have a right to say something and, and, you know, letting them know that they're, they're crossing that line. A lot of people are so afraid to say something that, and I'm not saying go and pick it and riot and all that other stuff, but sometimes you just need to say something like, Hey, you know, I really don't want to give up my social security number to everybody. I really, I really don't think that information is private information. It's okay to speak up for yourself and say something. Right. I usually do it in a different way. I get really present there. And I, it's like I used to speak up all the time, and I got slapped a lot for it. So now what I do, my whole department, which is the first time in the history I've been at this place, which has been over 13 years, everybody agreed that what's going on is not okay. And one person filed a complaint against one of the supervisors, which, cause see, I've done this and, uh, okay. Um, so I have to do it in a different way where I'm going to be safe because I'm too, I can be a target too. Right. No, but you, I think you do. I think you pretty much speak your truth, but 
It looks like we're at the end of the uh, the show, and uh, this was wonderful. Thank you so much, Laura, for speaking up. I know you're still at that job. It takes some courage to come out and speak. I know you didn't give us your full name, but um, you know you shared a lot of very very critical, important information. I appreciate you being here with us today, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica and JP. I love the show. I love it. I listen to it every Monday. Uh, thank you, Laura. And uh, thanks, JP. We had, uh, and thanks everyone in the chat room. Happy Easter. You know, it's a day later, but keep enjoying. Have a great day. See you next week. <laughs>